New tonight on CBS 44 News at 10. More coronavirus cases confirmed in the tri-state. New measures in place as we brace for the deadly pandemic. And a promise from lawmakers. The Senate is here. We are working. And we are going to deliver. Whether Americans can expect to feel some relief and new travel restrictions to prevent the spread of COVID-19 or Americans canceling their upcoming plans. Plus, a look at the companies remaining open despite those ongoing calls to close. Your News at 10 starts now. Breaking tonight at 10, more states across the region locking down communities to prevent the spread of COVID-19. President Donald Trump even announcing plans to push back student loan repayment penalties for 60 days while governors across the area encourage people to stay home and healthy. Illinois is the latest state to join that lockdown list with at least 600 positive cases so far and five deaths. Six new cases are reported in the tri-state affecting Vandenberg, Henderson and Davis counties. So the tri-state total sits at nine confirmed cases this week. Indiana has 81 with 47 in Kentucky. So far, no positive cases in southern Illinois have been reported, but they will soon feel the effects of those stay at home orders as restrictions go into place tomorrow. Illinois is now following California's lead, encouraging all people to stay home and limiting that non essential business and travel. Aaron Huber explains what that means for the area. We're stocking up on water and getting some food. We have to stay home, stay indoors, so we have to stock up on stuff. Donna White Moody, one of a number of those across Mount Carmel and across the land of Lincoln, preparing to hunker down. My grandson is six and he's had open heart surgery at 10 months. He has congenital heart defect and I'm worried about his safety. And preserving safety for those in the Prairie State is what prompted Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker to officially order a shelter in place directive. To avoid the loss of potentially tens of thousands of lives, we must enact an immediate stay at home order for the state of Illinois. For now, stretching from Saturday at 5 p.m. until April 7th. I want to say it and be clear, this is not a lockdown or martial law. The order provides for those in Illinois to still go to the grocery store and get gas, taking care of the fundamentals of life, but orders non-essential businesses to close and allow those who can to work from home and a halt on evictions. While this order is reliant on those across Illinois to practice neighborly behavior. I've instructed law enforcement to monitor for violations and take action when necessary, but that is not an option that anyone prefers. Illinois now joins Connecticut, New York, and California among those increasing restrictions on movement in hopes of stopping the spread and saving lives. We'll continue bringing the latest that you need to know to stay safe during the coronavirus pandemic and continue sharing facts, not fear. Aaron Huber, 44 News. Things cooling off across the tri-state quite a bit. We had that cold front roll through early this morning as that passed off to the southeast of us. Northerly winds move in and well, things They've cooled off across the tri-state. While we're not really dealing with much in the form of precip, maybe a stray sprinkle or two for the far northwestern reaches of the region, we are going to be dealing with dry conditions and cool conditions tonight. Check this out. Temperatures as of right now between the last 24 hours from yesterday, just after 10 o'clock to now, we're about 23 degrees cooler. But we had high temperatures today in the upper 60s and low 70s, and we're headed for the low 30s. Tonight and early tomorrow morning, we could be dealing with a significant swing of temperatures during about a 24 to 36 hour period. As of right now, we stand about 44 degrees. Winds from the northwest around 13 miles per hour. Still breezy out there. I'll let you know how long the northerly winds will stick around, how long we'll have to wait before that next chance of rainfall returns coming up. Virus is spreading across the United States and even here at home. We caught up with a Kentucky woman who says she's been isolated at home for weeks to keep others safe while she recovers. Tyler Druin shares this story you will only see on 44 News. I started getting weird high blood pressure. Um, I would stand up and I could feel my heartbeat in my in my neck. Uh, fever, cold chills, aches, um, headache like you wouldn't believe. Um, and then I started getting numbness and tingling um, in my arms, my legs, and now my lips are tingling. As the nation shuts down city by city, Americans are figuring out their new normal. 48-year-old Lisa Lonzo owns a hair salon. Not only is her shop closed per orders from the governor, she's home sick. COVID-19 has wiped through nearly every continent, starting to spread faster and faster here at home, changing the ways we live our life, even how we spend time 
time with our friendliest companion. Oh, my sweet boy. Okay, okay, mama loves you, okay? Mama loves you, okay? Okay, get back, get back. Imagine being quarantined to your bedroom for 23 days. That's the reality for Lisa Lonzo. She's tested positive for the coronavirus. Her husband has a severe lung condition. If he contracts the virus, he could potentially die. Here you go, baby. I love you. I love you. Be safe. Okay. Can you go clean your hands. I love you. That's how we do it over here. The 48 year old said it was days before doctors would even consider testing her, even after showing symptoms of the virus. Finally, after two positive swabs, the woman says she still feels like she doesn't know what's going on. The list of acute symptoms at this time is actually quite short and can appear anywhere from two to 14 days after exposure, according to the CDC. From going stir crazy to long, restless nights of being alone, Lisa says she's ready for the chaos to end. A message tonight from her bedroom in Kentucky. This is very real. Um, I hate that I have it, but I want to get my word out to people that people are dying and people need to heed warning and listen to the news and watch the numbers going up day by day because testing is now being available for people and we're going to see our numbers go sky high and and people need to take this very seriously and stay at home as much as you can and wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands and act like everybody has this. Tyler Drew in 44 News. And the greatest concern right now is staying healthy, but it's certainly creating a lot of stress and anxiety on business owners and employees who have been laid off. The problem of this magnitude hasn't happened since the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, affecting nearly one third of the world's population and killing 10% of those people. Many small business owners say they're afraid the government will help the larger corporations, leaving them in dire straits. I don't know if they're going to let us do anything. Um, I think it's going to come to where we're not allowed to even open, which is just going to crush all of us. And Governor Eric Holcomb says he's making economic disaster assistant loans available for small business owners so they can stay afloat. And hospitals are announcing restrictions this week to keep everyone safe. Deaconess announced that visitors won't be allowed to visit any of their inpatient facilities, but slight exceptions are in place. Many people are expressing their concerns, including one tri-state man who said he had to wait outside for five hours today while his wife underwent chemotherapy. I like to be in there and know what's going on. And I don't think she can call me, and I don't think I can call in. The phone's not allowed in some of them hospitals, you know, like that. So I'm just waiting. And Deaconess leaders say it's their main goal to keep everyone safe at this time. Indiana unemployment rates are skyrocketing as workers are encouraged to go home and protect themselves from the potentially deadly coronavirus pandemic. That means more people are struggling to file for unemployment. Mike Sullivan reports tonight from Indy. As soon as they shut down, that was the end of my pay. What does that say? Two holes and one fourth equals... I'm obviously not teaching my pre-K class right now. Instead, Leslie Adcock instructs her children now that this mother of three is without a job. Uh, at this point, we're not really sure what to do. The Greenfield daycare she taught at shut down. Our income had actually already been affected because my husband had to have emergency surgery last month. Like tens of thousands of other Hoosiers, she's testing the unemployment process with only half an income. So he's on light duty at work, so his hours have been cut back some. I would not be surprised if we're not exceeding 120,000 more unemployed uh, by the end of the uh, April job numbers. Michael Hicks is the director for the Center of Business and Economic Research at Ball State. He says the state has eliminated unemployment filing requirements like in-person job searches. They've sort of gone nearly as far as they can without a presidential disaster declaration that would include more people, for example, those working in 99s who are self-employed or contractors. He believes the president's plan of sending $1,000 to people will keep the economy afloat adding that Indiana has $2.3 billion in their rainy day fund. There are going to be job openings in other sectors. Logistics firms like Amazon or the health industry. I've been looking at applying somewhere like Meyer. With Adcock under the impression. He saw 17, 18, 19, and 20. She can't start a daycare out of her home for people still heading to work. Don't do things that are going to make this last longer, even if it makes you, even if it makes you.
a, a tight pocketbook over the next few few weeks. I think that's inevitable. If you feel you can't pay the bills, Hicks says the FDIC is telling banks not to penalize for collections for 90 days. He suggests calling utility company to explain. We need to. We'll start cutting back on things like Netflix and stuff that we can survive without. Whatever gets by. And the coronavirus federal task force is delivering updates on the nation's response to dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. President Trump says he will expand his travel restrictions to limit all non-essential travel between the United States and Mexico. He also praised governors across the nation for taking steps to stop the spread of coronavirus in their respective states. The president is also mentioning the Treasury Secretary's decision to delay tax day from April to July. A lot of people say, that they're not treated equally where they are. As we did with Canada, we're also working with Mexico to implement new rules at our ports of entry to suspend non-essential travel. These new rules and procedures will not impede lawful trade and commerce. And the State Department issued a level four travel advisory urging all Americans to avoid any international travel. As we announce the first positive cases of COVID-19 across the United States, tri-state leaders are reminding people this was all expected. Evansville Mayor Lloyd Winnicky is urging people across the River City to remain calm. Deaconess is providing drive-up testing for people with appointments. Mayor Winnicky says it's all essential to the long-term well-being of their patients and employees. Among the most important aspects of mobile testing is the fact that uh, health care providers who are at test sites uh, are not um, as exposed to someone who may be coming in to get a test. So uh, I think it's uh, crucial. Uh, both hospitals are working around the clock to ensure the safety of not only the broader community, but also of their providers. And Mayor Winnicky is also urging people to continue using those small businesses around the area as they deal with the financial stress of this looming problem. He says many people have made changes and accommodations to ensure everyone stays safe. Meantime, Barry Global is continuing operations during this health emergency. Officials with the Evansville-based plastics factory say they will continue working on essentials like protective health care clothing, sanitizing products, and even medicine. New tonight at 10, health care workers are on the front lines fighting the spread of COVID-19. While people are isolated at home, first responders are staying busy at work. Megan DaVinci has that story. We're all doing this for a reason. I mean, we're all trying to help somebody else out. It's a time many of us are trying to find a new normal. People all across the country isolated in their homes as COVID-19 continues to impact more and more communities. But for frontline caregivers, this may not be an option. Well, a lot of part-time crew that will come in and help out a lot, especially now with what's going on. But um, usually it's a 12-hour shift. AMR paramedic Scott Hendrick has been helping others for more than two decades, but recently the job has become a bit harder. It's been a little bit more hectic. Everybody's more on edge now with what's going on, so keeping keeping yourself clean and, and your truck clean and watching out for potential harm. Hendrick says when it comes to making runs, procedure has changed slightly amid the pandemic. A little bit more detailed questions, kind of more concerning how they're feeling and, and what they may have been around. Overall, Hendrick says he continues on with the job. Within the last year, Scott has worked more than 1,300 runs. Just recently, he received honors as a star of life for his exceptional patient care and commitment during his career. That I'm able to help somebody when they're at their, their worst um, and that they have uh, an individual or a crew there that's that's able to see past the you know the dramatic scene and take care of the individual the way that they would want their family taken care of or themselves. Day by day, Scott continues to ensure those in our community are taken care of, making him this week's hometown hero. I'm proud of what I do. Um, I, I try to come to work and do the best that I can and be a leader for those around me and be somebody that's uh, going to lead by example. In Evansville, Megan DeVenti, 44 News. And please stay with 44 News on air and online as we continue to bring you the latest updates on this looming pandemic. You can also follow us on social media or download the 44 News app to your smartphone or tablet. 
Tonight on CBS 44 News at 10, a glimmer of light through the looming darkness. How business owners are showing their support for the people affected by coronavirus. The 